Evening everyone, match day one in the UEFA Women's Champions League as Lyon take on Arsenal in France. It is great to be back. What a season we have ahead of us in this competition tonight. The holders begin their defence against another former winner of this competition. Arsenal still the only British club to achieve that. Lyon the record eight-time winners. What a performance it was that saw them beat Barcelona 3-1 in Turin back in May. Just awaiting the arrival of the players. Alongside me, Adam Summerton, the former New Zealand captain, Beck Smith, the Champions League winner with Wolfsburg back in 2013. And what a game for, to get us started here, Bex. It uh, could be some contest, this, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And thinking about looking at that starting lineup of Lyon and some of the players that they're missing today, notably Ada Hegeberg, Ali Carpenter, Macario, the list goes on. This could be a great chance for Arsenal today. Yeah, Leon far from full strength. It's quite a it's quite a, a cast list, isn't it, of missing players. We could run right through them, but we'd be here for some time. Their physio is very busy right now. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's definitely not something that we like to see in the game, but I think, you know, with Macario out as well, Debritz, Marajan, longer term, Umbok in that center back position as well. And one of our favorites we were talking about earlier, Cascarino, will be missed as well tonight. But having said that, they still have such a stellar lineup. Absolutely. Yeah, it is still a very strong lineup picked by the holders of this competition, as you would expect. I guess Arsenal fans would point out as well, though, in terms of injuries, that they have Leah Williamson out, Raphaeli out, essentially their centre-back pairing. So Arsenal not at full strength themselves, but here come the players. These two clubs, the most successful in the women's game in their respective countries. Prestigious names, trophy-laden histories. Leon against Arsenal is a great first-night fixture in the UEFA Women's Champions League. These are the nights to be part of club football's greatest competition, the prize they all want, the one Leon won for an eighth time back in May. Now begins their defence against an ambitious Arsenal who've started the season so well. This, though, their biggest test yet of the new campaign. These two clubs drawn in Group C of the Champions League this season. Also in this group, the Swiss champion Zurich, who were eliminated at the group stage last season. And of course, the Italian champions Juventus, who made the quarterfinals for the first time last season, where they went out to Lyon. And Lyon are without a whole host of star names due to injury, including five of the players who started last season's final. Le Sommaire, Lyon's all-time top scorer, starts a Champions League game for the first time since the 2020 final. Daniela van der Donk lines up against her former club. The Dutch international spent six seasons with Arsenal before leaving for Lyon last year. The only change to the 11 that began the, the weekend win over Bordeaux sees Kaiman replace Besho. Salma Basha there with the pendant. What a season she had last year. Born in Lyon. A huge source of creativity down the flank in this side. 16 assists she got in all competitions last season. Wendy Renard renewed her contract with the club over the summer. Officials, Kim Little, the Arsenal captain, Scotland international. She was actually involved in the last meeting, as was Renard between the sides a tie back in 2011, which was won by Lyon. 
Well, the big news for Arsenal is that Viviana Miedema has been left on the bench. Her place taken by the Norway international Frida Marnham, who makes her first start of the season. That's the only change to the 11 that began the Gunners' weekend win over Reading in the WSL. They're light in central defence right now with both Leah Williamson and the Brazilian Raffaele out through injury. Steph Catley, ordinarily a left-back, partners Lotta Wooden moy at the heart of Arsenal's defence. She fully deserves that young player of the year award. As I was mentioning earlier, exceptional last season, Selma Basher. It's hard to believe, really, that she's still only 21 when you consider what she's achieved in the game. She was 14th in the Ballon d'Or voting as well. An award announced last night given to Alexia Puteas, the Spanish international, for a second season running. Second in the vote was Arsenal's Beth Mead, who's had a quite, quite sensational year, perhaps most notably with England winning the Euros. But we are just about ready to go in France. Ivana Purikovska from North Macedonia is the referee this evening. He's been looking very relaxed, I have to say, ahead of the game. Jonas Edeval says tonight will provide what he called a reality check for his side. Something of an acid test as to their progress under his management. So Lyon's defence of their European title begins at home. Arsenal will rarely, you could argue, have a better opportunity to cause them problems. This is a Leon side, as we've mentioned, without a whole host of star names due to injury. Will Black Stenius have a big impact? Of course, no Miedemar, she starts on the bench. And there is the coach that delivered the Champions League for Leon last season, Sonia Bonpastor. As the players take the knee here in France, an ongoing show of solidarity in the fight against racism and all forms of discrimination. So, Beck Smith, alongside me, a former winner of this competition. I get the feeling we've got lots to look forward to tonight. <laughs> no, lots of stories on and off the pitch tonight as well. And interestingly, Arsenal had to play against Barcelona in their first game last season, and now it's Lyon. So we'll see how they go this season, but definitely a great start. Yeah, great first night fixture this. Arsenal will be spying an opportunity. As Renard comes across here. Certainly will have been the source of much debate, no doubt, among the supporters, both in France and indeed back in England. The omission of Miedemar from the starting lineup tonight. But here's Caitlin Ford, the Aussie international, with Black Stenius. Waiting in the box, and that's the first effort of the game on target. Marnham, on a couple of occasions in the first minute, getting into advanced positions. And we were talking about Marnham ahead of the game. You know, why why did he leave Miedema off the bench for a Marnham potentially? Because of a little bit more physicality in the midfield, but we can also see that she has that offensive power as well. It's clearly the instruction watching Marnham in the early stages to break away from the midfield, make those runs into the box. It's her first start of the season. Some game to make your first start of the campaign in. Basher. Back it comes here to Zinsberger set a new WSL clean sheet record at the weekend, eight in a row. They have been defending really, really well, Arsenal. And on the flip side, Lyon has given up a goal in the last four matches that they've had, which is very unlike Lyon. Yeah. They were missing Reynard in the beginning, but she's back now. Well, they did think they might be missing her entirely, didn't they, Wendy Renard? There was a lot of speculation last season that she might leave club at the end of this campaign in fact she added to it herself by saying that she was considering a new challenge but ended up signing a new long-term contract four-year deal 
running forwards and inside by McCabe. McCabe has continued our run here. And Meads arriving in the box, and Blackstenius is in there as well. But the flag upon this on the far side. Early ambition, though, from Arsenal. It's great to see them going a little bit more direct, actually. And it was a good call by the linesman there, the assistant referee that was offside. Um, but it, yeah, when, I think when Arsenal goes direct against this Lyon team, they you know, they can start a little bit stronger and get get the ball out in front of them and and start putting some pressure on the, this Lyon team that always looks so comfortable in possession. Hitler with the short pass. Inexperienced player at the heart of the Lyon defence tonight in Sombat, who is presented with an opportunity due to that injury to Mbok. No Carpenter either at right back. Two players who were involved in last season's final. It's uh, Jaren who plays at right back, the summer signing from Bordeaux. And we can see how high she's starting already with that Lyon confidence from the back, just able to play out and feel very confident just leaving Sombath and Renard to defend in the middle. McCabe forward here to take the throw in. First captain to nice the Republic of Ireland to a World Cup finals. I'm sure the party's still going on in some parts of the Republic. Great achievement, and McCabe. Key figure in that, Catley. Henri. Malas pass, Basher. Beautifully brought down by Malar, and there are three in the box. Former Arsenal player Van der Donk is one of those. Le Sommer is in there too. It's Kaiman who's just managed to keep that in. The experienced Belgian international with a fine cross into the box. And the header from Le Sommer well wide in the end. And it's already great to see that they're getting into the box. And with Le Sommer with so much experience in that team, you know, she knows where to be in that position. She knows as well that those centre backs aren't as experienced, so she will be putting pressure on them during this game. I mentioned earlier, it's her first start in this competition, Le Sommer, since the 2020 final. Has appeared in Champions League games since, but always as a substitute. You see the physicality already of Manum. Yeah, it could be really important, couldn't it, for the Gunners tonight, that physicality of Manum's up against Henri there. If you haven't seen it, by the way, check out the video of Henri commentating on her own goal in last season's final. It is absolutely brilliant TV. You can find it on the internet. She says, oh my God, what an incredible goal. And on Dean Henri with a screamer. But she says it with much more ferocity than <laughs> I just did. I was going to say, <laughs> the volume was a little bit too high when I was listening to it. It's Fantastic. Brilliant. Might see her sitting here next to you one day, Adam. <laughs> yeah, maybe. These clubs do have maximum points in their domestic league so far this season. Her side with five wins out of five, three out of three for Arsenal. They've actually won 11 league games in a row now. The Gunners, their last drop points, a goal to draw with Chelsea back in February. McCabe with the throw in. Put into touch by Sombat, who only recently turned 19 such an amazing story she got signed for Lyon when she was 16 years old and only the next season she was starting next to Wendy Renard one of her idols so she's actually been an amazing part of this squad despite her age yeah, Renard is 13 years her senior the player who she partners in the heart of that Lyon defense tonight layoff by Le Sommer touch off Kaiman he came on at half time in the win over Bordeaux at the weekend it's 
McCabe's throwing. Laxtenius. McCabe. Velti. Meads looking to get involved there, but dispossessed by Selma Basher. What a key battle that could be on Leon's left, the Arsenal right. Basher up against Meads, two of the most informed players in women's football over the last year, you could say. To be really honest, I think this is the matchup of the season. Mead in absolute top form, I think, was a little bit unlucky to, some were saying, to miss out on the Ballon d'Or win. And Basher, probably one of the best left backs right now on the planet, in my opinion really exciting to watch so keep an eye on that side of the pitch was able to keep in the pass from Renard on that occasion Selma Basha they missed out by just one vote didn't she Beth Meads in that vote for the Ballon d'Or Patea such a wonderful player though who walked away for the second year running with the Ballon d'Or Dean Reuter with the ball in, and Caitlin Ford it was who leapt for it for Arsenal. Still got plenty in the box here, but the cross over hit. Well, we've seen McCabe do that in the seasons that she's played for Arsenal. Just look up and see the, the keeper out of, maybe a little bit out of position, and always looking to score from that long period. I think there's nothing in this, this cross against Ford, but in, in a good position for her to score. on by Haran. Daniela van der Donk up against some former teammates tonight, and that's a good ball to find Kaima. Le Sommer is in there, Malar is in there as well. And Haran will keep it going, and Le Sommer with the header. And this is where Arsenal has to be so careful and so disciplined, because with Leah Williamson not being there and, and Souza being missing, they're going to really have to defend well in this box. And I think set pieces are going to be really important for them. But also, this game, I think, will be won in the defense. Basha. Belty doing what she's in the side to do there and snuffing out the start of a Leon attack. Wooden Moy. How hard is it, Bex, to, to ask a left back in Catley to, to form essentially a new partnership with someone like Wooden Moy in such a short period of time? I know she said, Catley, that Wooden Moy has been such a help to her in training talking her through the games, making sure that she switched on and thinking like a centre-half. Yeah, and it is a very different position, that centre-back position to the left-back. And Lottie Wubemoy, let's not forget, is a fantastic centre-back, but doesn't have the experience, you know, was on the Women's Euros Championship team, but didn't get any minutes in the summer, um, but still was around the team and had that experience. But, yeah, with both of them coming in and, and really having to be the anchor for this team, I think it's... It's going to be a challenge for both of them. It's Catley's free kick back to Zinsberger. Wubben Moy. It was a late call up to the latest England squad. Zveen Reuter wins the throw in for Arsenal. Mead. Travel to that Ballon d'Or ceremony, Beth Mead, along with Miedemar and the Arsenal men's player Bukayo Saka in a private jet. Marnham. Back it comes to Marnham in towards Blackstenius. There's a clash of heads there, I think, with Wendy Renard. Not sure whether the referee has noticed that as of yet. Would probably have stopped the game if she had. Wubben Moy, Little. I have to say, Little's goal scoring record in this competition is remarkable for a midfielder. 41 goals in 62 games. Some player, Kim Little. She just keeps on going, and I think Scotland really missed her in those qualifiers for the 
for the World Cup, clearly didn't qualify this time either. And that's a lovely ball from Kim Little as well. And Mead and Fords! Brilliant Arsenal goal. The move finished off by Caitlin Fords. Couldn't miss from such close range. But that's a team goal. And the Gunners lead here against the European champions. What a great goal, picking it up from the defense. A long ball again, going direct into Blackstinius, and what a beautiful cross over to Ford. And it, it is a little bit harder than it looks just to get your foot in the right place because it was still bouncing and bobbling, and she got in with enough pressure from behind and just finished it really nicely. And it's been a good start for Arsenal. They've been you know, pressing high and having good possession already, so they should use this and get some confidence going. The first goal of the season, Rests had come in May, although she did get three goals for Australia this month, but that's a big one in the Champions League. Crafted that really well. The ball initially from Kim Little was super superb. Here's Black Stenius, and now Mead. Basher wins it back for Leon. We really could have some game on our hands tonight in France. Yeah, and those Leon fans, they can be loud as well, especially when they're down. Always looked a real opportunity this tonight for Arsenal when you consider how many players the European champions have got out right now. And Arsenal confident, doing well domestically. And you look through the, the Arsenal squad as, as well, Bex, you have to say that it should be in their, their focus, their mindset, should be that they can go a long way in this competition. Why absolutely, not? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the, the, I think that's exactly what Jonas was, was talking about in the pre-game interview, was that he was recruiting really for this Champions League, going for the win. He, he, you know, they obviously want to challenge for the top position and win the league at home in the FAWSL, and they're sitting in the second place position only one behind in goal difference from Man United right now but it really is you really do need that depth of the bench to get really far in the Champions League Let's see if uh, Endler has been in the Champions League squad of the year for the last three seasons but already beaten tonight by Caitlin Ford. Can Leon hit back? This is Le Sommer. It's well defended. Calmly done by Catley, and now here come Arsenal on the counter. Blackstenius looking to hold her run to stay on sides. Marnham now picks her out. And the flag goes up on the far sides. Maybe, well, it looked to me like she was looking right across the line, but he still managed to go offside. I think she was saying she wanted it played but more quickly. Yeah, I think had, had she played it just a few steps earlier, that would have been, you know, a direct line into the goal for Blackstinius. And she wants that because she is a she is a very direct striker. She wants the ball in behind the back line. She wants to be able to run onto it. But a great chance again for Arsenal. It was a 1-0 win for Arsenal at Reading in the WSL at the weekends. Kept their ninth clean sheet in a row in the WSL in that game, a league record. It was a 3-1 win at Bordeaux for Lyon, Haram, Renard and Malar got the goals. Little. Well, given away by Velti, that could be costly. Kaiman, who hits one from distance with Le Sommer waiting in the box. This is exactly that experience that we were talking about, and it's not very normal from Kim Little, but that was Leah Velti in the middle just giving it away, and Leon is so good on the counter-attack here with such experience with Les Omer. So critical that they keep the ball there and don't lose it. Uncharacteristic error that from Leah Velti. Undenarily keeps the ball so well. It's Renard's pass, now Mala. Selma Basher. Haran. 
combining with Daniela van der Donk. Basher. Mala now waiting in the box. Le Sommer and Kaiman in there too. And they work their way out of a tight spot really well there. Henri. Can they find a way through here, Leon? Henri to strike one, and it came off Mala and Arsenal. For a moment, we're struggling to get it clear, but Lotta Wooden Moy did very well in the end. Just seized the initiative and got it clear. Basher now with another ball to the edge of the box. Well, very switched on the, at the bat there, Arsenal. Yeah, and so far they're doing a great job marking very tight. And you can just see Leah, and I think there was a looking for a handball Leon was but it did look like it came off of Kim Little's chest there so no handball from for me but just looking at Leah Velti and, and Kim Little sitting right in front of that back four just making sure that they're tight and they're they're solid and I think they're doing that on purpose just to make sure that that back four unit has that extra support right in front of them Le Sommer is the USA international Haran now Mala. Looking a threat here, Leon. they've reacted well to that early goal for Arsenal's Basher's cross, and an easy take for Zinsberger. Sommer on the edge of the box and the shot curled towards goal by Haran and Zinsberger got a touch on that. It was a great win in the midfield there from Haran and just finding feet getting it back and looking for that shot. She's so deadly from that area as well just looking to curl it in into that left corner but Zinsberger did well to cover the goal there. Corner taken short, it's an improved angle, and it's a really busy box, and Renard was in there, and that was on target. Wienreuther it was who got it clear for the Gunners, but there's a, a lot of pressure coming here from Lyon. Yeah, and, that, and that's where Lyon just has always that option for Renard to go up for those corner kicks and all those free kicks in that area. So Arsenal really does have to make sure that they're not giving away any cheap direct free kicks in that area because she will get ahead on it. He's such a difficult player to mark, such a sizable presence in both boxes at six foot one tall. <laughs> and that's pretty much all you can do is what Caitlin Ford just did there was just back yourself into her and try to put her off, which she did very well, actually. You have personal experience. <laughs> don't you? Unfortunately, I do. I always had to mark Wendy Renard. Not my favorite role. Catley. Such a stunning first half performance that Leon produced in last season's final back in May. Henri with that screamer just six minutes into the win over Barcelona. Hegerberg made it to 23 minutes. It's 3 0 with just over half an hour gone, but they could be in trouble here. Laxtenius with Mead in support. And Marnham shots! And how about this? There's a big story developing in France. The Champions League holders are 2-0 down on their own patch. And it's Frieda Marnham who's got the second. What a great start for Arsenal. They could not have wished for anything better already in the 21st minute. But this was a great through pass, and Blackstenius, as I was mentioning, loves that through pass, goes for the goal, comes back out, and Manum, with her first start in the Champions League against Lyon, just on fire already. That was a great 
great placement as well to, to look up and just see where the goalkeeper was, see where the defenders were, and be able to place it into the corner. Endler has looked a little shaky in the beginning, passing the ball out a couple times, but what a great start for Arsenal. Yeah, first goal since the back end of 2021. And that was the big decision from Jonas Edeval tonight. A decision that would have raised eyebrows to leave out Miedemar, to go with Marnham, that physical presence as you were talking about, Bex, in that midfield. But she's been more than that, hasn't she? Because right from the very first minute, she's been making those runs into the box, to the edge of the box, looking to get involved in those uh, attacks from Arsenal, and there it paid dividends. Absolutely. And the, just the physical presence, I've been already impressed with Arsenal. Normally they'll sit back and aren't necessarily one of the teams that you're going to see physically present, but they've been knocking, you know, knocking Leon off the ball, winning balls in areas where they need to be, also in the midfield, and that, that was where that goal came from. Problems for Sonia Bonpastor. She's not used to being in this sort of position. And Arsenal are looking confident. Velti. Leon battling to win it back, and they do. Kaiman, Le Sommer in the box, Malar's over there as well, but it was Wien Reuter who got it clear. Renard with the header. It's worth reiterating how lengthy the Leon injury list is right now, even if you just consider that five of the players who started last season's final are unavailable due to various problems right now. There are others you could mention as well. But Arsenal can only play what is in front of them, and so far they're doing a job on Lyon. Absolutely. I said a, mad, a great start for Arsenal. And also just the nuances to understand where the players are at in the season. You know, it's a long season. Viv Miedema is obviously one of the players that everybody's looking for. Manum a little bit less known globally, so a little bit more of a surprise. Well, Velti feeling a little aggrieved at the award of the free kick, but this is in a very good, a very promising position. For the holders, it was Le Sommer who tangles with Lea Velti. Again, it's that experience from Les Omer to, to be able to draw fouls in those areas that are going to be critical for Arsenal to be able to defend today. Just Kim Little in the war. They've been switched on, they've been concentrated at the back Arsenal so far, particularly from set-piece situations, uh, with Selma Basher to call upon and that wonderful left foot of hers. This could be complicated for the Gunners. It's now two in the wall though Mead is called back towards the six yard box I think Zinsberger had that covered but Blackstenius was there anyway just trying to sneak one in on that front post and she does have the skill to be able to do that Leon keep up the pressure Selma Basher to take the corner Goalkeeper thought about coming and then went back and it's off the bar and turned out. And they've got one back. And it's Malar with it. From close range. And she reduces the deficit here for Leon. What a contest this is. Three goals. We haven't even had 27 minutes. Couldn't miss, could she really, from such close range, but was in the place to take the chance in the first place. And that was just what Leon needed. And a great play by Horan to get anything that she could on that ball, just to make sure that it went back into the right position in front of the goal. Arsenal looked a little bit flat-footed from their defensive line. Sombat. Oh, 
always looked like we could have on paper a very good game on this opening night on our hands and so it's proving out on the pitch as Leon get the free kick. Stenius, the player, penalised. You can just see her coming in from behind. Henri doesn't really see that she's coming either, so not only does she get the knock, but it, it's a bit of a surprise. But I really liked how Ivana Tojovska, the referee, has ref so far. She's let it play, and I think it's played into the advantage of Arsenal coming out a little bit more aggressive in the first 25 minutes of this game. That one a little bit too aggressive for her liking, though. Really struggling here, Henri, who was player of the match in last season's final. Lots of conversations, I notice, across the pitch between the Lyon players, particularly after that second goal for Arsenal. Messages being put across here by Bonpastor as well. What would they be looking to correct out there, do you think, Bex? Well, I think they need to keep possession of the ball they're giving the ball away a little bit cheaply it just looks like Henri just got knocked with the shoulder into the jaw so yeah that is one that she, she might need a little bit of time to recover from but they need this player they need Henri because they need to be able to keep possession of the ball especially in the areas where they keep losing it which is in the midfield they need to be a bit more aggressive going forward when they've gotten wide into those wide areas with Cayman and we haven't seen Basha come up as far as she normally does offensively, so they need to get into those wide areas because their crosses are just beautifully placed. I saw one for Henri, who's still keen to continue. Remained after last season's final, a source of much debate around the French women's team that she still hasn't been recalled. She's been quite vocal about that herself, saying she couldn't understand, still doesn't understand why she hasn't been called back. I think there are, it's fair to say, politics at play perhaps there, but still remains a, a wonderful play. Potentially the reason why her commentary, her own commentary on her goal was so loud, Adam. Yeah, as I said earlier, if you haven't seen that on the... Uh, YouTube, you should check it out. Her commentary of uh, the winning goal, of one of the goals from last season's final, of her screamer early on. It's a great watch. As, as is this fantastic first night contest so far, with just over half an hour gone. Arsenal were two to the good. Caitlin Ford with the first, Marnham with the second. And here's Marnham again with Black Stenius to her right, Mies in the box as well. Maybe chose the wrong option there, Frieda Mann. Again though, Mann getting in the right position at the right time inside the box and just picks the wrong decision here. Could have gone across goal to her teammates. Le Sommer chasing, supported by Mala. Daniela van der Donk arriving in the box. Henri eventually brings it under her spell. A little bit congested on the edge of the box. The shot is deflected from Le Sommer. Velti. Nicknamed Snake Hips by her teammates Leah Velti because of the way that she can wriggle away from challenges. That's been quite noticeable from a Leon perspective, how they've looked to put her under pressure. As soon as she's got the ball, it's almost like been a trigger, hasn't it, for Leon players to get on top of her? Definitely. And her and Kim Little in the midfield, they just they play so smoothly together. And they are the key to to the the win if should Arsenal get through because we can see they normally play out so strongly from the back and with the absence of Leah Williamson who has a lot of confidence in Souza as well playing out from the back it's going to be the responsibility of that will be Little and, and Welty tonight Good movement from Kaiman McCabe is there and that's a good ball as well to Caitlin Fort 
Hatley leaves it for Zinsberger. Now Ford again. Challenged by Henri. Jarena. Sombat. Won their last 20 home games in a row. What an exceptional record they have on their own patch. And since a goalless draw with Paris Saint Germain in May of last year, they felt they should have had a free kick there, but the referee again tries to let it flow. Lovely turn by Daniela van der Donk, but then loses it to her former teammate Velti. Laxtenius, movement in front of her from Mead. Arsenal again looking a threat, and there's a run to the edge of the box from Marnham, and Ford is in there too. Kim Little. Wubben Moy. Starting to keep the ball rather than try and force the issue maybe there, Arsenal, as Catley finds McCabe. Touch from Wienreuter, Little couldn't get there, Le Sommer gives it away. I heard the reaction of the crowd there, one of frustration. Ford. Leah Velti. Ford. Little. Brings Ford into the game. Black Stenius on the edge of the box. Nice run this by Ford. Van der Donk. Calmly played by Catley and now Wubben Moy. Leah Velti. It's a great run of possession here for Arsenal and Started out by Manum a few minutes ago with that tackle in the midfield and Leah Valti and Cat Little getting on the ball and winning it. And just that physical presence, I think, is giving Arsenal a lot of confidence right now. She certainly justified the selection, I think, so far. Ford just overhit that, looking for Beth Mead. Arsenal win it back through Mead. Black Stenius wants it in the box. Wien Reuter has done really well. And Black Stenius couldn't get the shot in. It was a touch, I think, there from Renard. And Basha was there too. But it was taken away from the Swedish international. Great job here by Wien Reuter to get so far forward and pick out the pass to Black Stinius, takes a touch but then doesn't see Basha coming and again Basha always getting in there with that last touch such a great defender again Arsenal win it back quickly and look at this run here from Caitlin Ford sliding challenge from Jorena took it away from her but Arsenal looking full of confidence and keen to add to their lead to regain their two-goal cushion. We saw again, too, Lindsay Horan looking around for that foul to be called and not being called tonight, I think. Just the aggression of this. This is very interesting with the right-back, Jorena, withdrawn here, and it's the Dutch international, Damaris Egurola, who is brought on, and it would appear as though that is not an injury. That looks tactical from Sonia Bompastor. And a coach makes a change in the 38th minute, you know things aren't going well. Yeah, very unfortunate for that player because you know that that's the coach looking at you for to solve some of the problems. But a lot of that offensive power from Arsenal has come down that left side. Monum's gotten over on that left side. McCabe under pressure from Kaiman. 
It's going to be very interesting, isn't it, in the next few minutes or so to see how they that changes things from a Leon perspective, their approach here. I guess you had to change something because, it, yes, they got back into it, but in open play, it's not really been working for Leon. In fact, it's Arsenal who've looked the most likely to get the next goal, really. Definitely. Bon Pasteur is also a pen of player herself, so she knows, you know, she can have that sense for when players are maybe just not having a good night. And rather than leave it to the halftime like maybe most coaches would do, just chooses to sub her out. She was saying yesterday how it's important that they collectively stick together, as she put it, during this injury crisis they have right now. Leon. Bearing in mind the length of their injury list, Arsenal on the opening night was always going to be a, a difficult proposition, and so it is proving. Catley. We have another huge France against England clash tomorrow night in the UEFA Women's Champions League. PSG welcome Chelsea to Paris in a mouth-watering Group A opener. Kickoff for that one is 9 p.m. CET, which is 8 p.m. UK time. Don't forget, you can watch every game in the Champions League live on the zone. Basher. Shed over five minutes to go at the end of what has been a really good first half on this opening night. Lots to intrigue and interest us here. Not least the fact that the holders are trailing by two goals to one on this opening night. What a start it would be to this new continental campaign for Arsenal if they could see this through, but a long way to go in France. We could see Arsenal not letting up, putting pressure on that defensive line of Lyon and getting the ball back, being rewarded for it. Mala. They are nine games unbeaten, Arsenal, since they lost in the FA Cup final to Chelsea back in April. You have to remember and consider that this Leon, although under strength because of injuries, is a team that has won 15 games in a row. Renard. Henri. McCabe. Lovely ball forwards, clever, intelligent pass. Marnham looking for Ford. The layoff intended for Marnham from Mead, and it nearly worked. Van der Donk. Kaiman. Good challenge. And into touch by McCabe. Looks like they brought some Bath over to the right side there on the right back and even dropped in Henri almost as a centre back. Just to make that shift that they so needed and Lindsay Horan coming back in that defence and cleaning up that last play as well. She's all over the pitch tonight. She's there she is again. Yeah, over hit by Agarola on that occasion. We switched allegiances internationally, didn't she, from Spain to the Netherlands. The list of languages she speaks is quite something. Spanish, English, Basque, Dutch, and is learning French now naturally as well. I'm guessing it won't take a long. <laughs> I guess Evertonian as well, having yeah. come from Everton in January <laughs> yeah, this year. Yeah. Would have picked up some Scouse dialect, no doubt. <laughs> Aran. Van der Donk. Seized upon by Wien Reuter. And now it's Kim Little, whose leadership in this situation will be so important for Arsenal in the second half. A player of vast experience. Well, if this was an acid test, as so many have been saying for Arsenal ahead of this game, it's going pretty well so far, but 
A long way still to go. Keimer with Sommer waiting in the box. Really good defensive header. I think it was Wienreuter who got the touch to that and needed to as well. Yeah, they're defending well. They're picking up those players and as soon as the ball goes wide into those areas, they know that Lyon is so good technically to find those players in the box and they're marking up well. Sombat in a race here with Caitlin Ford as back it goes to the goalkeeper Enla. Now Sombat again. Given away by Catley that time and Blackstenius couldn't get there. As Blackstenius will scored in that 2-2 draw with Ajax, the first leg of that playoff tie. Miedemar, who ultimately got the winner in that tie in the second leg, that 1-0 victory for the Gunners in the Netherlands, as again, they win that possession in the midfield. Wendy Renard with the challenge, right on the edge of the box. It's Black Stenius who's gone down. Renard feels she got the ball, but she's been booked here. The Leon centre-back. And a free kick for Arsenal in a really good position. Well, at least Renard seems convinced that she hasn't touched her, but let's see the replay. Looks like she does clip her on the back foot. On the way to goal. And again, could have even passed it off a little bit earlier, but Blackstenius was looking, I think, to get that shot off. Well, no wonder there's plenty in the wall here for Leon because this is a great chance for Arsenal. I saw Catley score her first Arsenal goal in this competition last season with a very well taken free kick. Mead fancies it, we all know she's very capable in this sort of position as well. Every chance Endler could be troubled here. As we move into a minimum of two minutes added time at the end of this first half in France. It's been placed by Mead. But it is Beth Mead. It's magnificent from Mead. What a year she's having. Everything she touches seems to turn to gold right now, with the exception of the Ballon d'Or. So unlucky, perhaps, to miss out on that. But she scores the third of the night here for the Gunners. Endler beaten. Mead with the goal, and Arsenal have had quite the first half in France. What a goal by Beth Mead. It almost looked like it took a deflection, but I don't think it did in the end. Just perfectly placed around that wall, as you said, of almost five, six players. Great start for Arsenal. A worrying start for Leon to the defence of this trophy. The thing I love about Beth Mead right now is it's just her attitude. She looks like she's having so much fun out there. Yeah. Six goal involvements for her already in the WSL this season. Absolutely full of confidence. There's a goal in the Champions League for Beth Mead. Her third in the competition. You know, I start to wonder whether being left out of that Olympic squad is the best thing that's ever happened to Beth <laughs> yeah. Mead in terms of her career, because as disappointed as she was to be left out of that squad, the, the, the motivation she took from it was quite something, wasn't it? Absolutely, and maybe that second place win is going to be the best thing that has happened to her, although it's very hard to imagine a better season than what she had last season. And it's hard to imagine a better first half on the opening night in the Champions League for Arsenal, who are leading away at the holders of this competition, who collectively look a little stunned that free kick given away by Wendy Renard at the end of the half. It presented Beth Mead with a golden opportunity, and it was one that she took. Earlier, Arsenal had led by two goals to nil. After Ford had got the opener, Marnham had got the second, Malar 
got one back to make it 2-1. But I would say that Arsenal are not flattered by that half-time scoreline of Leon 1, Arsenal 3. And what a night this is so far. What a story, Beck Smith, we have unfolding in front of us here on match day one. The holders trailing by three goals to one at half-time. What a great way to start to start the, the UEFA Women's Champions League on match day one. But for me, it's Manum. I mean, the decision to leave out Miedema is such a big risk for, for Jonas because if he gets it wrong, he knows that he's going to get the criticism of the entire planet. Vivian Miedema, who just got back from the Ballon d'Or for her nomination, but Manum has been incredible in that midfield position, really being physical, winning balls, getting forward, getting into goal-scoring positions. Um, and also, I think we can't, you know, discount Walti and, and, and Little in front of that back line, just really firming it up. Lotti Wibbemoy doing a great job defending one-on-one one -on -one as well. So a very, very strong start for Arsenal. Where is it going wrong for Lyon? I just think they keep losing possession. This is a team that needs possession to be able to build the momentum. And that's what they do so well to so many other teams is it's so hard to get the, win the ball, first of all, from them. And once you do, keep possession. And, and they just keep giving the ball away very cheaply and in areas that are quite dangerous in that midfield area that I was mentioning in and around the Arsenal midfield. And, and this Arsenal team will, will punish them. They do have the quality now to be able to do that. We saw Bompastor be decisive and make the change. It hasn't really affected too much in a positive way, has it, for Lyon? No, it hasn't. And I think bringing Henri back as well into that back line, um, you know, questionable. I think we find it quite hard to press them, and that's why they get the opportunity to play just around us, really. Um, but I think in the second half, we'll get the press right and uh, we'll play a lot better. For you, what can make the difference uh, after the hard time? I think we just need to work a little bit harder, a bit more in energy uh, in the team, uh, especially with the press. I think uh, we're good pressing-wise, and uh, every team hates it when you press them. So I think if we get that on point, then uh, we have a chance again. Thank you. Sensual science, Morty. Adidas X Speed Portal, multi-dimensional speed, carbon fiber, soul plate. Now go win the international unlicensed cup. Oh. Oh. Goal! Welcome to sold out Madison Square Garden. And now, here is the reigning, <laughs> defending, <laughs> undefeated, and undisputed lightweight.
being good enough. So many of you were This is Chelsea. Some breaking news. Sam Kerr is joining Chelsea on a two and a half year deal. It'd be almost like Messi signing for the men's team. It's that big a deal, I think. It's quite annoying that everyone's so focused on Sam. I think people just need to take a step back and actually focus on the girls that are here. In the men's game, you have to play well to belong, and in the women's game, you have to belong to play well. To come in and to fight every day, it takes it out of you. And it's hard when you're just not quite good enough. The first year of being a mum and a manager was so tough. Last year, I felt I neglected the players emotionally. But this season is different. The Zone Soccer Show is here with regular updates on the biggest stories, the biggest names, and the best takes. <laughs> it's come from both of us. What's Paul Strachan? Jimenez. Raul Jimenez. Raul Jimenez, yeah, yeah. That's one for the outtakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Inside info from those in the know as well, taking a global view of the game that we love. The Zone Soccer Show with new content daily. Give me your top five goal scorers this season. Chelsea, no. Chelsea haven't got anyone no. out there. Sorry, Raheem Sterling. <laughs> <laughs>se te ilumina la cara eh, sí. al hablar del Mundial, es, es impresionante. Entonces, ¿cuán lejos vais a llegar? Al final, al final. campeón. Vale, muy Solo bien. Solo pensé en eso. <risa> ¿Y los goles que vas a marcar? Porque de momento llevas seis, ¿no? Sí, bueno, si ganas la Copa sin hacer gol también no pasa nada. <risa> Quiero ganar. No me importa meter goles. Ahorita hay que ayudar al equipo, eh, hacer buenos partidos. Sensual science, Morty. Adidas X Speed Portal, multidimensional speed, carbon fiber soul plate. Now go win the international unlicensed cup. Oh, oh. Goal! Welcome to sold out Madison Square Garden. And now, here is the reigning, <laughs> defending, <laughs> undefeated, and undisputed lightweight.
Yeah, welcome back. Leon trailing by three goals to one against Arsenal on this opening night in the UEFA Women's Champions League. And a team meeting going on on the pitch here, led by the hugely experienced Wendy Renard. Beck Smith, a former winner of this competition, alongside me, former New Zealand captain. I wonder what she's saying in that huddle. It has to be something about the aggression and just the confidence because Leon isn't playing with either of those two things right now so I can imagine that they spoke a lot about just keeping the ball keeping possession finding their rhythm because this really is not the Leon team that we're used to seeing and Arsenal is taking full advantage of that right now yeah they look happy they look relaxed don't they the Arsenal players saw Katie McCabe a moment or so ago smiling there Everything going her way right now, having just qualified for the World Cup with the Republic of Ireland. Henri is still not right, is she, after that blow to the face in the yeah, first half? It was, a, it was a tough one. It was coming from the straight from the shoulder, and she was almost turning into it as the shoulder was coming through, right into the jaw. And I've had that before. I still have issues with my jaw. When it gets dislocated, it can be really sore. A fascinating second half ahead in France. What reaction after half-time, after the words of Sonia Bonpastour will we see from the holders, Leon? Arsenal, by the way, have never beaten Leon. Could they do it here tonight? What a story that would be on the opening night. They haven't lost at home, Leon, since April of 2021. Two goals down as we get back underway here. No changes from either of the head coaches at half-time, although I should remind you we did say, see that one change from Leon in the first half. With the right-back, Jorena, withdrawn, and Egurola, the Dutch international, coming on. As that early Arsenal attack comes to nothing. What a time Caitlin Ford's having Bex, particularly maybe since returning from the Asia Cup in February, She's been certainly one of Arsenal's form players. I remember she said that seeing her family was, as she put it, a big refresher. It re-energised her. It's shown on the pitch. It's such a long way to Australia. <laughs> and yep. obviously with the Women's World Cup there next year in Australia and New Zealand, or I should say New Zealand and Australia, right? Um, I think it's very exciting time for these players to finally have fans at home in their own stadia. And she's playing with one of the world's best clubs right now. There she is again. I thought she was away for a moment there, Caitlin Ford, but the play pulled back. Course, Arsenal finished just a point behind the WSL champions Chelsea last season. Went so close to the title in England. Must look back at that 2 0 loss to Birmingham City in January, which proved so costly with. A sense of regret that this new season, this new campaign has started very well. Could be about to get even better. Vine Rottier. So I was just going to say, Vine Rottier here showing her quality, just getting away from that Lyon player and making sure that when she's being fouled that it's, it's being called, jumping on the ball. And she's just, just a really solid player. Very underrated right now, I think, in the game. Very sad not to be able to see her next year in the Women's World Cup. Austria didn't qualify. Here's Marnham. Another good run from midfield. McCabe with the cross. And Meads arriving. It was just too much on it for her. Yeah. 
Mara beaten to it by the sliding Kim Little. Mara with Leon Sony goal of that first half. Agurola. Touched by Le Sommer. Mala loses out to Wienreuter, who was signed by Arsenal shortly after they were beaten by her Hoffenheim side, you might remember. Last season, a really disappointing away performance from Arsenal in this competition last season. But as you say, she's acquitted herself very well at right back. She's keeping out Maritz at the moment. Haram with the ball to the edge of the box. Nice feet from Velti. Henri. Renard. Reuter again. Egurola with the header to Selma Basha. How they need her to get into more advanced positions in this second half. There's little battles for it for Arsenal. Absolutely, and just in that whole segment of play in the last few minutes, it's pretty much summarised what this game is about. Every time Leon gets the ball, they just don't have the options. Lack of movement. Lack of desire to get on the ball, whereas Arsenal is everywhere. They're moving, they're doubling up on the defensive side. Renard with the foul there on Beth Mead. Got the coach off the bench. Pretty animated for a moment there, Jonas Edevar. And he is, he's one of those coaches that you can constantly hear from the sidelines. He was even cautioned last year as well for being a little bit too animated, but some players prefer to have that animation in a, in a coach on the sidelines, and I think you can see it. Since he first came into Arsenal, it's been very clear he's a popular player uh, coach with the players. Mm. And that's very evident as Catley plays it in, and Enler gathered that. That was a great pick from Endler. That was a really nice cross in, and she just read that beautifully to come out and get on it, smother it. Endler's probably one of my favorite goalkeepers right now. She's came onto the radar in 2019 Women's World Cup when they played against the USA and lost to the USA, and she still won player of the match. She's just phenomenal for Chile. I reminded myself yesterday that she actually Spent some time living in London, didn't she? She had that brief spell with Arsenal's London rivals, Chelsea, back in 2014. I'd forgotten all about that, I have to say. Bashers down here, now Little. Arsenal carry on. Ford, an option down the left. Blackstenius through the middle. She bided her time and found Ford. Can Arsenal find a fourth? It's played into Endler. He would have been grateful of that because Arsenal looked dangerous again there. Yeah, but you could see Blackstinius was wide open, just sitting in between the two centre backs. So I think had Ford got her head up just a little bit sooner, she could have found Blackstinius in that space. Agurola. Van der Donk, that's a good ball. And Los Someris in behind here, but that's really well played by Catley. It's a great tackle by Catley. Had she got in on that, that would have been surely a goal by Les Omer, who's so clinical in that area. Basher with a chance to cross. Time it was Lotto Wubben Moy with the header clear. Kaiman with the ball into the box towards Haran. Body clear by Little. Arsenal doing a great job defending. Just finding those players, picking them around. You can see the defenders looking around, looking behind, looking at their back shoulder, making sure that they're really man-marking tight. Le Sommer. 
Van der Donk's cross is over hit for Mala. Behind it goes for a goal kick. They should be confident, Arsenal, defensively when you consider their record. Zinsberger, I think I mentioned it in the first half, set that new WSL clean sheet record at the weekend. But it was always a question mark, wasn't it, tonight, coming into this game without their two first-choice centre-halves as to how they would cope without them. Well, the answer to that question is pretty well so far. So far, absolutely. And I think that Velti little combination, just sitting right in front, both with the defense, but also picking up balls just a little bit deeper, starting the play from that lower center midfield position has really helped them keep possession, get a rhythm in this game, and take some pressure off of Wobin Moy and Catley, who aren't as experienced as Williamson and Souza. Black Stenius looking for Wienreuter, but Malar was back for Lyon. Really good challenge to win it back from Velti. It's nice from Marnham to Black Stenius. Marnham gets it back again. Now she had Ford who'd made a run into the box, but Marnham's full of confidence and took it off. And again, Leah Velti getting in there, winning that ball, passing it into Marnham. And like you say, it's just really great to see a player like Marnham, who we don't see that often. She's come in as a substitute in the league, plays for Norway and just having that confidence to be able to strike it from there. Kaima. The Sommer with the header. A comfortable take for Zinsberger. Just didn't get the power or the purchase behind that Le Sommer. We said early on, if they get into these wide areas, Cayman is so good at finding those players in the box and she will pinpoint the head of her own players. And that's exactly what she's done. Lotte Wubin Moy just lost her for a second there but no power on that. Max Stenius it was who got the winner at the weekend against Reading, her second goal in the WSL this season. I was reading yesterday that apparently her surname was the creation of her dad. He lived at a farm called Blackster. Her granddad's name was Sten, and Eos is apparently a common ending to a name in Sweden, so put it all together and you get Black Stenius. Because why That's not? That's where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that or Son yeah, in Sweden. Yeah. That was a great signing for Arsenal as well. I think she was one of the hottest players on the market at the time when she was looking to leave BK Hecken in, in Gothenburg in Sweden and everybody wanted her. There was rumoured to go to Man United at one point and that she ended up on the Arsenal roster has been hugely beneficial to them. And a great option for you know, Sadevar, who we should repeat, just in case you are just joining us, has left Viviana Miedemar on the bench tonight, but the player who took her place in the sides, essentially Marnham, has been one of the best players on the pitch so far this evening. It's on the score sheet as well. Really brave decision that from the coach. Watch wide by Zinsberger. Against former teammates tonight, Daniela van der Donk. Won three trophies in six seasons with the Gunners. I remember when she left, one of, one of the reasons she gave for leaving Arsenal was she said, I don't think I can see myself winning the Champions League with them. I wonder whether that was uh, part of the motivation perhaps for some of her ex-teammates tonight. Or famous last words. But she's been on form this season, hasn't she? Scored three goals in her last four appearances for yeah, Lyon. Yeah, playing well. I think it took her a bit of time to come into this Lyon squad, as it normally does. It's so many top stellar players, but she seems to be finding her feet, especially with the lack of players on. Black Stenius stretching Lyon at the back here. Marnham arriving in support. Black Stenius has a go and forces the save from Christian Endler. But far from settling for a two-goal cushion, Arsenal want more goals. I just really like it when Arsenal goes direct as well with Blackstinius. It just adds a whole new dimension to how they play. And we see um, Henri there in the centre-back position, which is not the position that she's normally playing. And with all the injuries, 
having her so far back in the pitch and not used to being in that position either to be one-on-one, -on -one, well, not, not used to it. Obviously, she's used to coming back and tracking from that midfield field position, but it's not where we want to see Henri in these games, do we? We want to see her commentating on goals that she's scoring. I think in last season's final, there's McCabe. Leaves it to Catley. This is Leah Velti. McCabe wanted it and got it. All the time in the world to weigh up this cross. Egurola, it was who got it clear. Catley's having a fine game. There's her cross towards Blackstenius, beaten in the air by Wendy Renard. It's real intent here at the, the moment from Arsenal, who've got themselves a corner. She's got to find solutions. There's a lot about the left foot of Selma Basher. Katie McCabe has a fine left boot as well. There's her delivery. hoping to be making her 150th appearance for Arsenal this evening. And they're doing pretty well without her for the moment. One bat by Mala on the ball again here. Basha, Haran. Again, it's just not working, just not clicking out there for Lyon tonight. I was just about to say, what a nice little piece of play that they can finally have some possession and get out of that defensive half. And just sloppy play from them tonight. Is it too simplistic to just put it down to the injuries? I mean, the way this Lyon team trains normally, with so many superstars, that they should be, doesn't matter really who they put on the pitch. They should be able to keep possession and... In trouble again here, Black Stenius, and it came off her own teammate, Marnham, who got in the way. And the flag is up anyway. But as we approach the hour mark, Arsenal look the more likely to get the next goal. Marnham, it was stood in an offside position there. Another good chance for Arsenal, though. It's just Lyon just doesn't look decisive at all in this game. Just a reminder that there's more UEFA Women's Champions League action tomorrow night, including the Spanish giants Real Madrid, who, of course, eliminated Manchester City in the qualifiers. They'll take on the Albanians at Vlasnia. The kickoff is at 18.45 CET, 5.45 UK time. Don't forget, you can watch every game in the UEFA Women's Champions League live on the zone. Sombat. Mala. Under pressure by Wien Reuter, who's been excellent. At right back. Fine performances right across the pitch so far this evening for Arsenal. Can they keep it going? Around half an hour to go here. Arsenal being rewarded too by their high press. They're not letting up in the 60th minute. You can see them putting pressure on the own as high up in the pitch as they can get in touch with them and then doubling up and winning balls in the midfield and Kim Little's lovely little dink there to relieve pressure, but... Oh, what a lovely ball to find her there. And she was able to miscontrol that and still comfortably keep hold of the ball, Kim Little. McCabe with the cross. Henri was there for Lyon. Well, Sonia Bonpastor is somewhat restricted in what she can do in terms of affecting this game because of the lack of options really on the bench. You can just see the players getting frustrated with each other as well. Well, they're not used to this, are no. they? <laughs> I think there was.
was just the feeling with Arsenal coming into this campaign when you saw the group, Lyon being one of their opponents, they remembered those two games against Barcelona last season where they conceded four on each occasion. And I think there was the feeling, although it is different opposition, it's a similar standard of opposition, and they wanted to see, well, how far have we come? I think the answers are positive, aren't they, so far? It's certainly been a difference in just the attitude and the body language of these two teams coming out today. Arsenal really hungry, getting doubling on the ball. And Lyon looking a bit apathetic. She's ordinarily so reliable in that sort of situation. Sums the night up really so far for Leon that cross from Selma Basha. Worked their way out really well there, Arsenal. Look at the time here that McCabe has on the ball. Blackstenius to try and flick it on. Even before tonight, I wonder how much of a concern it's been to Bon Pastor, the fact that Leon are struggling for clean sheets this season. They've only kept one in their first five league matches of the campaign. They conceded four goals in five games, which isn't much, but they only conceded eight goals in the whole of the last league season. Arsenal with a player down here, and the referee has stopped the player because she feared it was a head injury. It's the indication she made to the touchline. And the player down here is Katie McCabe. Yeah, it just looks like she goes in with her head as Cayman comes in with her knee. Does look like that would hurt. Accidental collision still doesn't mean it hurts any less. That's what we like seeing from Katie McCabe, though. The aggression that she brings and the passion and you know, sometimes getting a little yellow card here or there for being overpassionate, but she does bring that level of aggression and an intensity to this team that they so need on the international stage as well. You know, I think back with Katie McCabe and her time at Arsenal, and it's easy to forget that if you cast your mind back to around 2017, she'd been sent out on loan to Glasgow City, and the feeling was that she was probably, by her own admission, heading out the door at Arsenal. And then the arrival of Joe Montemuro at the club totally changed things for her, and she's never looked back, really. Yeah, it's amazing, too, how sometimes that is like that as a player. You, you can play better under certain managers. Sometimes you just don't get the chance or feel like you're ever going to get the chance with a certain manager. And it just takes a bit of fresh blood and new confidence to come in and feel like you can play like you can. And so good to see the Republic of Ireland qualifying for the World Cup next year. New teams coming into the mix and being able to see and watch players like McCabe on the world stage. It's going to be fantastic. First Irish captain to guide them to a World Cup finals. Sonia Monpastor won the UEFA Women's Champions League in her first season, first full season, having replaced Jean Luc Vasseur. First woman to be Lyon's head coach, the former French captain. This one of the most difficult situations she's found herself in since taking over. So much has gone right, but it's not so far this evening for the French and European champions. Give it away here to Ford, who looks to Ben Wan. Oh, that's the pick of the bunch. Endler could only stand and watch and admire. A fantastic strike from Caitlin Ford, who's beaming, and so she should be. Arsenal have been magnificent so far tonight, and Ford has got a second. They just look so calm. They look like they're having the time of their lives, and such a rare miss hit from Wendy Renard. And that's a fantastic goal, because she's 
very far out and she's actually just taken the time, put her head up and picked exactly where she wanted to put that ball and it ended up hitting the side net before it hit the back. So as you say, Endler with not a lot of chance to get her hand on that. Now she said the other day, Caitlin Ford, how excited she was about tonight. Said it was their biggest challenge yet of the season, Arsenal. But you detected from the way that she spoke that she was keen as her coach and some of her teammates have been to see where they are as a team and they could get a fifth here it's Mead they have got a fifth <laughs> this is off the scale for Arsenal they are beating the French and European champions by five goals to one this is beyond the stuff of dreams A night to remember in France for the Gunners. And again, just that center back positions. They're, they're just huge gaps in the defense where Arsenal can just play right through. And Meade does very well here to take a lovely touch, look up, and just place it lovely, nicely into the back of the net. But still, very hard to watch this Lyon team and their defense just looking so unsettled tonight partly due to the pressure that Arsenal's putting on them. Remarkable. Who would have predicted this? I said to you before the game <laughs> off air, I thought that Arsenal might cause them problems <laughs> tonight, Leon. Nobody could have predicted what we're seeing in front of us here. I mean, really, and also with their two centre backs missing and just that stability, but they have been absolutely phenomenal this evening. I don't know about you, but I can't remember seeing Leon picked apart so comprehensively beaten as we are doing right I now. I mean, look at this passage of play as the ball rolls out, but Lottie Wubamoy very casually with that first touch playing it in and just being able to one touch it out all the way across the pitch. It's just, they look like they're having a lot of fun tonight. And that's, that's exactly where you want to be in these types of games. You want to be in that flow state where things are just happening. You're not thinking. You're enjoying yourself, and that's exactly how they look tonight against Lyon, the title holders. An Arsenal club with a long, prestigious, trophy-laden history, but even by their standards, this is quite something. This Haran completely miskicks that. successful club in the history of women's football in England the only British winners of this competition that was nice from Mallard but it's end product they need not tricks and flicks and turns it's been lots of end product from Arsenal not so much from Lyon you know what's been so great tonight about Arsenal it's been such a team effort there's many players that are standing out, but there's none that I thought, really, they're not pulling their weight. Every single player has contributed well to this game, and Lyon is just really struggling to find that team momentum. We see that flair from Mallard, but like you say, it doesn't really go anywhere tonight. Little, who's having a wonderful game. Just dictating things in that midfield. Arsenal aren't done yet. A shot that time saved by Endler, but every time they go forward at the moment, it looks like they might score. It really does. The, the defensive line of Lyon is, is totally disjointed and really separated, and they do tend to do that. They play with two in the back line and tend to push up their, their backs. But when they lose the ball, they're just not getting in tight enough. They're not making themselves compact enough. And it's really leaving so much space for Arsenal to come right through the middle. And again, that win, just again in the midfield. Celia Velti, Kim Little, Manum Triangle that's just dominating this game. 
we are seeing here one of the most astonishing scorelines in the history of the UEFA Women's Champions League. The holders, the conquerors of Barcelona in the final last season, are 5-1 down at home, and we've still got 20 minutes or so to go here. It's Wienreuter who's taken a blow to the face. Not getting a great deal of sympathy from the home support. Which looks like Basha sticks her hand out and it does actually look quite intentional, but hopefully it's not. Referee didn't seem to think it was, so lets it play on without a penalty. Direct free kick. Basha. And the home support felt there was a push by Beth Mead, so did Selma Basha, but the referee unmoved. And this is exactly what I was talking about in the beginning, that the referee has really let them play on tonight. Irina letting them play, and it's really played into the favor of Arsenal. But Lyon doesn't like the the aggression that they're playing, being played against and being knocked off the ball. And they like that possession play. They like to keep the ball. And when they're getting knocked off the ball, it, I think it's knocked them off of their, their rhythm tonight. I mentioned earlier, Arsenal, the only British club to win this competition. Their reign as holders was actually ended by Leon. We've won four of the five previous meetings between these clubs. Arsenal haven't won any, just one draw. There's a swung in by Mallard. Yeah, one draw, the rest, Leon wins. It looks like that's going to be ended emphatically tonight, though, by the Gunners, unless there is the most incredible turnaround here. Little. Loses it to Basher, but Little looks to win it back as Basher goes on. Le Sommer, Kaiman. Haran. Basher's shot is charged down by Leah Velti. Look how compact that Arsenal defence is right now with the four in the back and the three right in front. Very, very hard to break down for that Arsenal team. You can see why they've kept so many clean sheets, not just this season, but back end of last season as well. Set that new clean sheet record in the WSL. It's a, a good unit. And what's most impressive, Bex, about that is that you've had Catley come into it, a left back playing centre back. And you've also, of course, well, it's a new partnership there, isn't it, with Wubben Moy and Catley? I know they play together at the weekend, but it, it's pretty untried, pretty untested, and yet they're doing the business tonight against still some very talented players, despite the fact that Leon have got so many out. They are, and I think that the main point to look at is the discipline that they've had in that defense. They've been, they've kept that back line tight. They've obviously had the help of Velti and Little. I think I'm gonna have to join their name soon to Vel Little or something. It's just, <laughs> those two have been phenomenal tonight, but still the, the discipline that they've had in that back line to keep it tight, as you say, as a new pairing, as a new four-back line, is tremendous. Well, Velti, the aforementioned Velti, being taken off here. And a fine performance from her. And Jordan Nobbs, who played the last time these two sides came up against each other more than a decade ago now. I just thought for a moment they might be rethinking that, but they have indeed made that change. So Nobbs comes on for Velti. And what a situation to come into. 5-1 up, away from home against the European champions. How fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great to see Jordan Nobbs back on the pitch too. Obviously had some really hard injuries. Haram with the header, and that was straight at Zinsberger. From Sombat, either side of it, and she would have been in trouble there, Zinsberger. 
exactly what why they have Renard come up for every single free kick that they have. She's just so difficult to mark and always finds herself in the right position. So you can never discount her in any of that area. So Arsenal does still have to continue to be disciplined here. They're well on their way here, Arsenal, to inflicting what would be a record defeat on Lyon in this competition. Never lost by more than three goals before Lyon. Deficit four at the moment, and then looking to make a double change as well, the home side. Laxtenius, who's led the line very well. Basher. Lindsay Horan. Van der Donk. Daniela Van der Donk again. It was a good tackle to take it away from her by the outstanding Wien Reuter. Remember when I saw her playing for Hoffenheim last season? I remember watching her, particularly against Arsenal, actually, and thinking, there's a player there. <laughs> well, how she's developed even more since signing for the Gunners. Absolutely, and Hoffenheim was not traditionally one of the better teams in, in Germany, so their participation in the Champions League, the Women's Champions League last season, and how well they did, well, came at a little bit of a surprise. But it's, so this is where, why these competitions are so important. So Sina Brun has been brought on here, the former Paris Saint-Germain player, Danish international. Moroni's going to be brought on soon too, but Caitlin Ford to come off here, having backed herself a brace. Tonight, her first goals of the season will be replaced by one of the summer arrivals, Lena Hertig, a Swedish international brought in from Juventus. Juventus, who were eliminated by Lyon in this competition last season, won back-to-back -back Serie A titles with Juve. As we approach the final 10 minutes here. So Moroni replaces Basha on that left-hand side. We've also seen come on there Viviana Miedemar as well to make her 150th Arsenal appearance. Laxtenius notice has made way, so changes from both head coaches. But that is one of the stories of the night, isn't it? The bravery, really, the tactical bravery of Adevar to back himself with that call to leave out Miedemar. You know, the player who, well, there are a lot of good players in this Arsenal team, but she has been the star, the, the, the star name, the player they so desperately wanted to keep over the summer and did. Absolutely. I was talking to her a couple of years ago and she was talking about how she doesn't really like that number nine, that striker role. She really does prefer to sit back a little bit more in the 10. And that with Blackstinius coming into the squad, that's given her the opportunity to play in that role a bit more. We see her come in obviously as the number nine, but I think that pairing of her and Blackstinius has been Amazing, but now tonight we've just seen a whole nother level of what this Arsenal squad can do, and that's what they're going to need for the season and to, to make it to that final round of the Women's Champions League this season. Lena Hurtig can also play up top as well. She's come in, but she's on the left hand side now. Leon have not lost by more than a single goal, by the way, uh, in this competition since 2009. That is the size of the achievement here from Arsenal, that they're four goals up against a team, and as I'll repeat that again, that hasn't lost by more than a single goal in the UEFA Women's Champions League in well over a decade since 2009. It's, a, it's just a... A wow performance is this from Arsenal. I mean, literally, as you said it, I got chills because imagining being there as one of the Arsenal players standing on that pitch and leading 5-1 against Lyon, who is so dominant in the women's game. No wonder they're smiling. 
and they've not lost at home since April 2021 as well. They're 22 home games unbeaten. Paris Saint-Germain, the last side to beat them at home. And that's their only defeat. And get this, their last 82 home games. It's insane. And you can see, you can see it all over the players now. They know, they know what this, the impact of this game is going to have. They know that their reputation is on the line, losing 5-1 to Arsenal at home. You can see they're all frustrated, throwing their arms up. But what must also be remembered here is, in terms of qualification, losing on the opening night, far from ideal, but there's also Juventus in this group as well. Now, we saw how well they did last season in this competition, and they really tested Lyon in the knockout stages as well. Sure, at the other side in the group. This could be a fascinating section, Group C, as Midamar looks to latch onto that, acknowledges the intent of the ball forward. And again, Endler reading the game so well. She knows that that back line is not her normal front four and she's just playing a little bit higher so she could read that and come out because that actually was a fantastic ball through and if they didn't have such an experienced goalkeeper like Endler it could have could have led to a different ending there Mead battling for it with Moroni and now it's Little so calm, Kim Little. She's been immense, hasn't oh. she? She's just so nice to watch. So easy, makes everything look so easy. I remember Jordan Nobb saying of Kim Little that she's the type of player that you'd sign for a club just to play with her. Yeah. What a compliment that is. <laughs> Absolutely. I was gutted because she, she seems to have missed every single major tournament pretty much yeah, so due to like injury. And now not playing for Scotland anymore, which clearly they could have used. Well, maybe Scotland's loss in Arsenal's game in terms of her energy and her fitness. Absolutely. Nobbs. A real Arsenal stalwart, Jordan Nobbs. What it will mean to her to be out there and being part of a display like this. On a night like this, a performance like this from Arsenal. Five minutes to go. 5 1 they lead against Lyon. And Lyon stretched here. Hurtick with Miedemar waiting in the box. Angle was always going against Hurtick in the end there. Maybe the cross was on earlier for Miedemar. And again, I'm, I'm really enjoying watching this Arsenal team go a bit more direct. Again, Lena Hurtig is another one of those players that can play in behind that back line. Coming over from Juventus, I think she really, really extended her how she became a play, you know, how she was as a player with that Juventus team, um, being more of one of the top players there and gonna be a different, ooh. Again, that back line of Lyon, looking a little instable. But yeah, it'll be great to see how Lena Hurtig does in this team once she finds her rhythm. He can play in several different positions. It gives the coach, as all coaches love, options. I mentioned the, the fact that Juventus are in this group. Leon go to Turin on match day two. The side that uh, they eliminated in last season's quarterfinals. Arsenal hosts the Swiss champions Zurich on match day two. It's a tricky assignment in their second game for the holders, particularly going into it off the back of this. Yeah, I was going to say, Arsenal going into to Zurich, that's a much better pick. So 
coming off, coming off, coming off of this win, going into Zurich, hopefully getting three points there. Although Zurich has developed a lot in the last years, knocking out Servet, who was in it last season, and then finally having that game against Juventus, where they may have already qualified for that next round. Great position to be in for Arsenal. And we know that after the game, a lot, perhaps particularly in the French media, understandably, will be made of the misses in the team for Lyon, and they are notable, they are sizable. The, the length of that injury list is anywhere. Five of the players who started the final not available, several others not available either through injury but again it is worth stressing that it's very difficult to go somewhere like this when you're without your two first choice centre backs as Arsenal were tonight and that should be pointed out as well and remembered as well in the assessment of this performance definitely when we were talking before the game I would have never predicted a score line of this size because of those two centre back misses Leah Williamson in particular is such a big miss because it's not just defensively that she's a miss, it's in some ways creatively as well. She plays a lot of those link balls through. Playing diagonal balls, she does that a lot in the side, starts, attacks, and it is a player, as a result of that, who's hard to cover for. Absolutely, I think that it's exactly what they've missed today, coming from that back line, which is why the Littles and the Welties have dropped in a bit and taken that role on. Not to say that they can't hit that Cat Lee and, and Wibber Moy, but Leah Williamson is certainly known for her long diagonal passes and starting the, the play from the back with Arsenal. It's also a great opportunity for those center backs to be able to step into that role. And a lot of times players gain that opportunity and gain that confidence when there are players that are missing that are big name players that are normally the leaders in the team. and. You know, Lottie Wibber Moy, I think, has a really good career ahead of her. Into added time we go as Haran has to take on Wim Reuter. Yeah, Wibber Moy is another player who deserves huge credit for her performance this evening. Somebody who will feel all of this more than most, having grown up an Arsenal supporter, come through the youth system. Egg Look at that, Beth Mead sliding in there, throwing herself in front of the ball in added time with Arsenal 5-1 up. If that doesn't sum up the spirit that Arsenal have in this side right now, I don't know what does. I love Jonas's interview on Beth Mead as well. Ahead of the game, he was saying that really, another part of her person is the energy that she provides. And a lot of times players do get carried away with their success and, and she just doesn't. Yeah, he was talking about when they lose the ball, wasn't he? How important she is in terms of recovering the ball for the team. He talked about that in the same breath as their goals and assists, didn't he? In terms yeah. of the importance of it to the way they play. Absolutely, such a well-rounded player. And just a lovely person. Which helps. <laughs> two goals for her tonight, two for Caitlin Fords, another for Marnham. You've got it all going. Credit to the Leon supporters who pretty much all of them are staying right till the bitter end from their point of view here. Miedemar. Mead. I wonder how much this has made up for just missing out on the Ballon d'Or for Beth Mead. She's going to be booked for that challenge. But watching Beth Mead over the last couple of minutes, seeing her commitment, it sums up so much of what is good about her and what is good about this Arsenal side right now. Yeah, and the aggression that they played with for this whole 92 minutes plus already has been what has made the, the difference tonight between them and the Lyon side. It's unfortunate that she's got a yellow card now because you don't want to be collecting these in the Champions League. They can add up and you can end up missing games. So that wasn't 
wasn't a wasn't a smart foul from Beth Mee, but like you said, she's sticking to the aggression that Arsenal has put into this game right from the start. It's one last chance here for Leon to make the scoreline a little more respectable. Le Sommer with the ball into the box. And it's thump wide having come off the frame of the goal. Brune was in there for Leon. It's a great delivery into the box and I think it's Lindsay Horan who gets her head on the ball. And her work rate, we have to say tonight, has been absolutely incredible as well. With the absence of some of the big name players, she's been defensively very strong and continually working. Her work rate is something that the US national team is always looking at benefiting from. But still, no luck for Lyon tonight. As eye-catching a result as you will see in the UEFA Women's Champions League. The holders not just beaten, the holders hammered, the holders humbled on the opening night. Arsenal, magnificent. And they inflict a record Champions League defeat on the holders on their own patch. Who could have imagined this? Who could have scripted this? What a performance from the Gunners and no big celebrations. They've just come and got the job done. Jonas Edeval deserves huge credit for his decision, his brave decision tactically to leave out Viviana Miedemar, one of his star names this evening. Marnham, who came in to her place in the team, one of the goal scorers for the Gunners. Mead got two, Ford got two, and it finishes Leon one, Arsenal five. Becksmith, what a night this has been for Arsenal, a, a club with such history, such pedigree. This one of their most memorable nights, certainly in this competition. It's incredible. And when we look at the women's game just recently, there's been so many moments where history has been made with the women's Euros, with its Champions League last season. And this is yet another one where we're seeing the whole balance of the women's game just shifting, where the Arsenal's, Jonas talked about it before the game, how before it was Lyon had all of the facilities, they had all of the money, all of the funding, and now it's changing, it's shifting. There's more teams coming into it, taking it more seriously, and, and we've seen the passion that Arsenal have played with tonight. It's just, it's just proved that. It's been absolutely incredible tonight. I'm impressed here by the, how they're downplaying the celebrations. <laughs> yeah. It's almost as if they're saying, this is what we expect to be doing. We expect to go away to the big teams and beat them. And that's from a mentality perspective, that's really telling for me. I think just watching the body language during this game as well, seeing how aggressive Arsenal was. And again, I think the referee Ivana Proskovska has done a fantastic job, but let the game play. And, and I think the, that allowed Arsenal to get in to really you know, disrupt Lyon's uh, way of play, their rhythm. And it's just been a fantastic evening tells you all you need to know about the possession statistic and how much to read into it, doesn't it, in a game. Leon had more of the ball, Arsenal win 5-1. Yeah, and you, and you look at the total attempts too, 20. I mean, but of those 20, how many were really on target with passion that we really felt like they were, you know, going to be dangerous, whereas Arsenal, they just looked dangerous every time they got the ball. I liked how they were a lot more direct today, as we were saying from the beginning with Blackstanius and some of the new players that they're playing. Um, I think it really suits them, and it'll be interesting to see how they bring this win into the league now in the FAWSL and what happens with Lyon after this game as well. Juventus next for them, that won't be easy. That will not be an easy game. Zurich for Arsenal at home, a game that they would expect to win. But this has just been a quite staggering night. It has been quite something to watch.
a brand new era. It isn't the best in European football. Oh, wow! What a goal that is! Come on, Dean Henry! With a spectacular goal for Leo! Rick, what is this? Consensual science, Morty. Adidas X Speed Portal, multidimensional speed, carbon fiber soul plate. Now go win the international unlicensed cup. Oh, oh. Welcome to sold-out Madison Square Garden. And now, 